arrived to the Security Council to listen to the Palestinian ambassador's reaction to the veto. A right to live in our homeland, Palestine, as an independent state that is free and that is sovereign. Our right to self-determination is inalienable. It is not tied to a time or a time frame. Our right is eternal, permanent, and continuous. It cannot be delayed. It cannot be suspended. And it has no statute of limitations. It is important that this right not be subject to manipulation or domination or conditions, especially not by Israel, the occupying power, the ethnic cleansing power, the genocidal power, the colonial power that is determined to evict our people from their homeland, to eliminate their identity and to replace their history and their culture, and to uproot their present and their civilization, and to besiege their future and their horizons. The people of Palestine will not disappear. We will not disappear. The people of Palestine will not be buried. They are a historical fact. They are a history that cannot be erased, no matter the great power, no matter the tyranny. This Palestinian people, the glorious people of Palestine, remained on their land, not out of charity or mercy from Israel, but out of patience and steadfastness and hope and sacrifice, despite the occupation despite the oppression, despite exile, enslavement, the siege, despite being persecuted and displaced and evicted and driven away as refugees. We have repeatedly warned of Israel's colonial policy in our land, which it not simply declares openly but now boasts of it. We have warned of the absence of a horizon for our resolution. We have warned of the dangers of ignoring the Palestinian cause and its central nature, of ignoring the suffering of the Palestinian people, which is only growing. We have warned of the dangers of claiming that a just peace is possible in our region without a just, comprehensive, and lasting resolution to the Palestinian question. Madam President, we came to the Security Council today at an important historic moment, regionally and internationally, so that we could salvage what can be saved. We place you before a historic responsibility to establish the foundations of a just and comprehensive peace in our region. You are before the opportunity to revive the hope that has been lost amongst our peoples. We put you before the responsibility of interpreting and translating your commitment towards a two-state solution along the 1967 lines into actual action, firm action, that cannot be maneuvered or retracted. The majority of the Security Council members have risen to the level of this historic moment, and they have stood on the side of justice and freedom and hope, in line with the ethical and humanitarian and legal principles that must govern our world, and in line with simple logic. Here, we renew our sincere appreciation to sisterly Algeria and to the Arab and Islamic groups and the member states of the non-aligned movement and the Maltese presidency of the council, a dedicated presidency that has managed our proceedings wisely. We express our appreciation to all of those who supported the Palestinian membership request and all of those who voted in favor of the draft resolution. By all of your statements, those who voted in favor and even those who voted 
differently of the passion that it contained in your commitment and uh, understanding the pain and the moment of the Palestinian people. I salute you in the name of the Palestinian people and their leadership. Sayyid al-Rais. Madam President, we accepted the two-state solution along the 1967 borders as an international vision of peace. Arab states put forth the Arab Peace Initiative to support this vision. We built our state with the efforts of our sons and daughters and with the support and trust of the international community, despite the obstacles placed by Israel. We have engaged in the peace process in a manner that would secure our supreme national interests, and we have abided by the foundations of a peaceful and legal settlement to the conflict. The Palestinian leadership under the presidency of President Mahmoud Abbas continues to be committed to this peaceful track, and we renew our call for an international peace conference to be held under multilateral international sponsorship, a conference that aims to put an end to the Israeli occupation and achieve the independence of the state of Palestine. But the question remains, is there a true partner for peace in Israel? Is there a partner in peace with us in Israel? Israel insists through its consecutive governments. It insists on maintaining occupation, on murder, on siege on the eviction of people, on building settlements. These are all policies and practices that run counter to the United Nations Charter and to the resolutions of the United Nations, and all aim to achieve just one objective, namely to stuff out any hope of a sovereign Palestinian state of a Palestinian state that exists as a viable state. Israel believes that the state of Palestine is a permanent strategic threat to it and will do its best to block the sovereignty of a Palestinian state and to make sure that the Palestinian people are exiled away from their homeland or remain under its occupation forever. It is up to you now to determine who loves peace and who is the enemy of peace. Who loves peace and who is the enemy of peace. Who wants to save the lives of innocents and who seeks to perpetrate genocide. Israel does not want a two-state solution. Israel does not want a state of Palestine. This is Israel's scheme. This was approved by the Knesset and is publicly announced by the Knesset members. And it's very representative in this council and anywhere in the United Nations and outside of the United Nations does so. This is a plan that is claimed by Israeli government officials and politicians. Netanyahu even boasted about this as a political achievement, boasting that he succeeded in preventing the rise of a Palestinian state. He declared this in his imaginary map, the map that he brought with him to the General Assembly last September. A map of Israel from the river to the sea. A map that annihilates the existence of Palestine. This is the plan of his extremist government to get rid of Palestine, to get rid of the Palestinians. This delusion, unfortunately, costs innocent lives. 
And do you know what Israel needs to implement this delusional plan? The plan to evict the people and to annex the land? All it needs is more time, more immunity, and more lives and blood. What will the international community do? What will you do? You, the International Security Council that is charged with the maintenance of international peace and security, what are you going to do? What will you do? What are you willing to do? Will you give Israel the time it needs to annex Palestinian land? Will you give it the immunity to evict the people? and kill them? Will you give Israel the weapons to kill more people? Will you give her, give Israel the right to veto, to veto our right to exist on our land, to veto the Palestinian state's right to full membership in the United Nations? Palestine's membership in the United Nations is not symbolic. It is a matter of great importance to Palestinians and to the peoples of the region at this very sensitive time. It is something that they have been awaiting since 1947. Since 1949 until 92. We've been waiting since 1947 and we are in 2024. This is an important step to rectify a historic injustice that befell the Palestinian people since the partition resolution and through the Nakba and until this very day. It is an important step to revive faith in international legitimacy, in international law, and in this very organization, its charter and to revive hope in the peaceful settlement of the conflict. Giving Palestine the membership is a manifestation of our right to self-determination. It consolidates the legitimacy of the state of Palestine in a manner that is irreversible and cannot be denied by any party. It protects and preserves the land of the state of Palestine so that it is not divided up as present as happened before. Palestine's membership in the security in the United Nations is an investment in peace. Admit us to membership. It's an investment in peace. Our full membership in the United Nations does not detract from the rights of any other member state, nor does this membership threaten or cancel out the membership of any other state. We just want to be equal to all of you. We don't want to replace anyone. We want to enter your club as equal. Supporting, granting Palestine full membership has put us on the path of hope, to keep the hope alive. The fact that this resolution did not pass will not break our will, and it will not defeat our determination. We will not stop in our effort. The state of Palestine is inevitable. It is real. Perhaps they see it as far away, but we see it as near, and we are the faithful. Madam President, we are the ones who experience oppression and injustice. We know more than anyone else the nature of this oppressive occupation, because we live it. We know best what a just solution is, and we tell you that the time for Freedom is now. For freedom, it is the time for free Palestine. Please remember that once this session adjourns in Palestine, there are innocents paying 
the price with their lives and the lives of their children, the price of this Israeli action, a price to the double standards, the blind bias towards Israel, the price for the delay in justice, freedom, and peace. Madam President, the Palestinian people have borne more than they can handle. They have suffered all forms of torture at the hands of the Israeli occupier. It has become clear now, more than any time before, that this glorious people have not and will not forfeit the right to their land. Despite the gra gravity of the suffering, of the tragedy, of the destruction, of displacement, our Palestinian people have never lost their humanity. Our Palestinian people now are searching for the remnants of life. And you will not find a people who have a stronger desire to live an ordinary life like our people in Gaza. Gaza of pride, Gaza of glory. Our Palestinian people, wherever they are, want life. They cling on to life. Just like the other peoples on this planet. The Palestinians are a people who aspire to freedom, to a dignified life, to a peaceful existence. The people of Palestine will not disappear. The people of Palestine will not be buried. The Palestinian people have never been unnecessary. You either do us justice or you do it justice. We love life to live in freedom and dignity in our national homeland. We will not disappear. Either you deal with us with fairness and give us our rights or give us our rights. Thank you very much. I thank the Permanent Observer.